Hello, this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. A while back, I did a video where I talked about inheriting some wool rugs from my mother, one of which had severe moth damage after being rolled up and unused for more than a decade. I want to be clear here as I am repairing this rug in today's video, this is not the quote proper way to repair a rug, but it is the only way I was able to salvage it. This rug had what I would call catastrophic moth damage in three places, and I'll get more into why I chose this method of repair in just a moment. Life has been so hectic and busy, I have not had time to sit down and work on things like mending, but we happened to have an ice storm over the Christmas holidays, and that gave me a chunk of about three hours to sit down one afternoon and get this rug fixed. Here you can see the three areas of severe damage to the warp and the weft. They're all along one edge. When you have a rug rolled up, it is much more prone to moth damage. Rugs should be out on the floor and used. Now the proper way to repair this would be to cut all along here and rebind the rug, making it smaller. I would have to remove about a five inch section of the rug and lose all of that material. Now I do know how to rebind rugs. I could have done that but I just couldn't bring myself to cut off all of that border and have a rug that was no longer symmetrical. Because I couldn't reweave this section, it was so badly damaged, and because I didn't wanna cut it, I decided to patch it with some wool felt. This is actually wool fabric that my mom bought in 1997 for another project and she felted it. It's quite thick and the red matches really nicely. So I decided to patch these areas. Yes, this is visible mending, but I'm not concerned about it. I don't mind seeing that objects can still be kept in good use and kept highly functional, even if they have really obvious repairs. Here you can see Ruth and our dog Athena and I hung out while I worked on this project. We were watching Ruth Goodman's Wartime Farm on BBC. I'll have a link to it in the description. I started with the least damaged section of fabric and I made a fold over patch with the red felt. I measured to see what would work best in casing all of the fraying and damaged areas. Now there were some parts of the warp and weft that were weakened by moth chews but had not broken yet. I wanted to make sure I covered all of that area to prevent the damage from spreading and the rug from unraveling under the patch. I wanted to stabilize both the top and bottom of the fabric, which is why I chose a fold over patch. One of the great things about working with a felted wool for a patch is that I don't have to tuck under the edges. It does not unravel. Now, I wanna say here that when you are working with the fabric of a wool knotted rug, it is not like any other fabric. It is very hard on the hands. You want a good, strong thimble and you want to listen to your body. If you have arthritis, if you have other limitations, be really careful with how much time you spend on this project without taking a break. I'm using a thick red wool yarn that I bought at a thrift store 18 years ago and is actually from the 1940s. It matches perfectly and it is very strong. Now I'm being careful here to test that I'm only putting my needle through those areas of fabric that are still really secure and are not weakened by the moths. I'm making sure to put pretty big knots in the end of my yarn because when you're sewing through a rug, it has a lot more room for knots to pop through the warp, especially in those areas that are damaged. So I wanna be careful that my knot's not gonna slip through. Now I'm using that combination of back stitches and running back stitches. I don't really have a method to my madness here. This is not the authentic way to repair this rug. But again, I didn't wanna cut off that whole border and rebind it. I'll also say that I priced out taking this to a rug shop to have them reweave it and the cost of fixing the damaged areas, either by attempting to reweave it, which I don't think would have been successful, or cutting off and rebinding was more than the rug was worth. So I opted for the frugal visible option I could do myself at home.
I inherited several rugs from my mom and only the ones that had been kept in storage were damaged. Rugs are meant to be used. I know I talked about this in a previous video, but don't stash those heirlooms away in a cupboard or a box. Use them and enjoy them. I'm glad to have my mom's rugs out on my floor in my home where our family can use them and think of her and remember her fondly. First patch done and on to the second. You can see this area has more severe damage. There are parts of the warp and weft that are completely gone and holes that are in the fabric. So I need to stabilize this area before I put my wool patch on. I'm doing some kind of large and rather rough looking stitches to flatten out the area and prevent it from curling under and also to kind of stabilize it across those holes. This will be covered by a patch. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be functional. Here you can see the more coarse warp fibers and where they've been chewed on the end. You can also see all of the little knots that make up the design of the rug. Once that warp is broken, those short knotted pieces of wool start to just crumble off. The individual knots will slide right off the warp and make an ever growing hole unless you stabilize and patch the area. Here you can see I've gotten to the edge of the rug. Now, yes, it's a snow day, so I am wearing my pajamas, or rather I should say an ice day. We didn't get any snow, just horrible ice pellets. I'm gonna come back along the other side here and continue to stabilize this before I add my patch. Here you can get a better look at how a rug is constructed. Those long warp fibers with a series of knots tied around them. This is really skilled craftsmanship and it's such a shame it's been damaged, but I'm super glad I'm gonna be able to keep this rug in use in our home. All of these little bits that keep coming off are all of the knots that create the design. So I want to reduce how much loss there is going to be and use those patches to cover the hole so we can still use the rug on the floor in our house. Okay, it's not beautiful, but it works. I've made sure not to pull the stitches too tight because there were those gaps where the fabric was completely missing. I just want to stabilize it. Now it's time to patch. Here you can see the finished patches where I have done that straight stitch, back stitch, or running back stitch. And here is the rug on the floor upstairs in our craft room. Really pleased with how this turned out. I actually really like the fact that the stitches and the patches are visible. I love the fact that you can tell this rug has had a new lease on life. Originally, I was gonna put these patched areas of the rug hidden underneath a sofa, but I like it better here where you can see everything. Yes, there are some paint splotches on the floor. This was my daughter's painting area before it became a sewing and weaving area. Now, I really am pleased with how this project turned out. I love that a rug that otherwise would have gone in the scrap bin because it was not financially feasible to repair it has a whole other life to give and it will be enjoyed for many many more years the patches on it are something that will remind me that the objects we love and cherish should not be stored away in a box they should be out and used and enjoyed 
I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to my new patrons this month. I know I've been absent a little bit and I really appreciate the fact that folks continue to support this channel even when our family is going through a really difficult time and I can't quite post as often. I'll be back really soon. Thanks.